大家好，这是回说访谈的第二个单元。在这个单元里 ，Dr. Stamler 将从量子力学的角度带我们看回说。Dr. Stamler 是一位回说治疗师。在上一节的访谈里 ，Dr. Stamler 谈到了催眠以及我们如何在意识解离的状态下可以去到其他的转世。接着，他谈到了回说为什么是可能的，为什么不是幻想。在访谈的最后。我们也看见时间如何在出神状态里变得不再是线性的，过去、现在与未来可以同时存在。在这个单元里，我们将更深入地从量子力学的角度去探讨这个主题，并发掘它对你的意义。So, Dr. Stamler, can you tell us more about the quantum mechanical view of past life regression? So, here's what the quantum mechanical view, although it's probably wrong to consider it just one view of quantum. Of quantum mechanics translated into individual experiences across time and space, because、um, this is a, this is a specific quantum mechanical view which says the many worlds theory applies, and it's it it is、uh, the quantum mechanical view that says that time time is in fact simultaneous. Our egos create linear time, but time is simultaneous. Now again, remote viewing actually provides a lot of evidence for that, because time and space do not mitigate the capability to remote view.、Um, so there is no distinction in terms of lives, in terms of going into other lives、uh, between the past, the present, and the future. So. Past life regression would then be a no- misnomer. Progression, meaning to go to the future, which some therapists do, is also a misnomer. All lives happen simultaneously in the expansive now, in the greater now. And when you when you go to so-called pa- past life, that so-called past life can be another life that's happen- happening. Actually, they're all happening now. Uh, but even can even happen in a time period that looks like the one that you're living in, and that that can overlap it. Now, some therapists can't go there, and so if if it's a life that's either in the future, logically, or cur- currently with the present life, then they assume that it's not a life of yours. And that is some sort of entity, or attachment, or energy that's that's not yours. That it's attached to you. That's why it's come up. I don't believe that.、Um, I believe that you have a whole host of lives that you have access to, and if the therapist or the client doesn't block the possibilities of future lives. Or lives that don't even occur on Earth, for example,、uh, those are all available to you, and all will help answer whatever question you're trying to answer through the regression process. Okay, so with this quantum mechanical view of so-called past life regression, what new opportunities do you see coming up in terms of healing? Okay, so that's a wonderful question. So the way the QM can work in in therapy is that in the many worlds theory and in quantum mechanics as a whole, time is simultaneous. Therefore, and that's what we said earlier, the past, at that as in past life regression, is a misnomer. The lives at that point are going on in the expanded now. And that should be in quotes. Expanded now, and meaning that as you access that life, whether it's in the past or the future, or or happening now at the, at what you consider the present time,、um, as you access that, that life that you step into is going on at the present time. So, if it's the time of the building of the pyramids, 
and you access that life that participated in building the pyramids, that life is happening now. So you go, well, how, how does that work? Well, we create linear time. Time is simultaneous. And Bashar, the channeled entity, says that different time periods are simply different frequencies of action. And when you access a particular life in a particular time space, you're simply shifting frequencies to access that. And when you shift the frequency, that part is happening now in the expanded now. And uh, so what that means is there is an opportunity to shift that life into another probable channel. So that's called rescripting. I think somewhere here we talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's one aspect. The other aspect is, is the aspect of probable selves. So if the many worlds theory is correct, and at each decision point, another part of you splits off and takes the decision that you did not take, the present personality in the present time period, that means that whatever problem you're working on, whatever thing you're trying to resolve, there is a piece of you in a probable reality that has already solved it. And all that takes to bring that into the present life, that solution that it, the part of you has already created is for you to shift the beliefs and ideas, the mindset that has locked you into the present defective solution that's causing you pain, suffering, or whatever. And so quantum mechanics, the many worlds theory says, there is a part of you that is living now, in the expanded now, a probable you that has abundance. What, whatever you're seeking, whatever you're trying to solve, that has, has love, that has um, creativity, whatever things that you're trying to fix, in your life or bring into your life and by shifting then the ideas and the beliefs what you've really done is you've shifted vibration so that you now align with that life and the notion that whatever you're trying to solve no matter how painful the solution already exists in a probable life is can it be really powerful uh -huh. because you don't have to create something that doesn't exist it already exists. You just have to align with it. That's all. Mm -hmm. You know, that notion of the many worlds theory is that the quantum wave doesn't collapse. You simply correlate, you align with one outcome. Well, what we're doing in, in therapy, when you, when you do it according to quantum mechanics, this interpretation of quantum mechanics, there are other interpretations, but this interpretation of quantum mechanics is you, in fact, are shifting vibrations to align with another solution. And that, that means that you've, you've, you've changed a belief. You've changed a definition that you hold about reality in your life. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. So in the past, regression has been used to resolve past trauma, but it looks like right now you can also use it to connect with the potential side of yourself. Right. Yeah, actually, you know, that, that's, you know, that wonderful Gandhi quote, you know, be the change you want to see. Well, this is at the personal level. Uh -huh. You're becoming the solution that is available now in a probable self by shifting ideas. Right. Really powerful. Okay, do you mind explain a little bit more about the difference between the past and future we see in the regression in the expanded now versus the past and future we see from the ego. All right, so we're trying to differentiate between the past and future that the ego lives and the past and future that you're, uh, that you're accessing during regression. That's right. What? Okay. That's right. So <clears throat> really the, the difference between the two for me is that the ego because it's the modern belief, uh, is taught that 
that we that we live in a linear time period where something happened yesterday and we no longer have access to it and something will happen in the future but we can't control what that is and both of those the both of those beliefs are incorrect um we have access to the past and we can change the past because again when we get into that interpretation of quantum mechanics all probable selves at each moment exist and all probable selves take the alternatives that that particular quote past self so let's take a past self that was murdered there were there are probable selves at that point in time that took made decisions that did not lead to murder now or rape or any number of of unpleasant things to use a weak word here so you know the belief is that it, that's fixed there's only one reality it doesn't change it moves in time the ego can learn and this is part of the transformation we're in now that one each moment has many probable moments and we have an option as a matter of fact when we collapse the quantum wave at the planck time period um at that moment according to channeled material channeled material i happen to believe we recreate our entire reality even our universe and and it has in it attached a different past and different future now because of the power of the ego what we do is make those changes very small and when we think we see a different change we write it off as our memory was faulty um you know our my particular mood has changed the way i see something when in reality the past has in fact changed and with changes in beliefs you correlate with a different past and you correlate with a different future and the two shake hands there is there is a a um an interpretation of quantum mechanics that says that there is a wave that comes from the future and the wave that comes to the past and those two shake hands and create the present um both are subject to revision and it isn't that you're quote changing what existed in the past or the future you really ought to think of them together what you're really doing is through your change in ideas and beliefs in therapy for example um you have correlated with a different past which is now a new past for you and and inevitably that then correlates with a different future so if you're in pain and suffering and you're trying to solve something and you've got a past life that bears on that issue there is a change there is a, a opportunity again we said time is is a series of shifting vibrations so you have to see i see time differently and those vibrations all exist and expanded now so now if i shift the vibration to see the past in a new light i can correlate with a different past that actually exists because each moment in the past in the present in the future has all the probable um outcomes that have occurred that do occur i mean our vocabulary here is a little difficult because we live in a reality an egoic reality that wants to see time as a timeline and, and time isn't really that so it isn't just quantum mechanics that can tell us that there's a lot of really good channel material that says that as well and and the bottom line then for therapy is that um 
it really permits you to make some very profound and radical changes in your life when you want to do that. Okay. Because it's there now. Now in quotes. Right. So, so the problem with the ego there is, is you know, it's kind of like a child at one that yeah. believes that the entire world is its parents. Right. And that's all there is. Well, we need to grow beyond the one that says the ego is all there is. And the way the ego constructs reality, thinks about reality, that's the only option. And we can have an ego that in fact accepts simultaneous time and the benefits to it. Because you see, if you expand your consciousness in that way, you also expand the opportunities for the ego. Ego doesn't create reality, but you can think of it that way. Uh -huh. um, you can expand what the, the maneuvering room that the ego has. Uh -huh. It's just, you got to let go of this little lifeboat right. that says it only flows in one direction. Uh -huh. So in that sense, there's really no reason to get hung up on the past because you can always go back to change it. Recorrelate. You haven't really changed it. The old one still exists. You just don't correlate with it anymore. Uh -huh. You see? And what happens is to the multi-leveled, multi-dimensional self is that the other selves of which you are just one facet in the, in, as this egoic personality the whole system shifts, you can say, in its vibration or in its expression or in its um, expansion of consciousness. I mean, all of those things kind of get at the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, the whole system shifts, the past, the present, and the future. Right. So it's like this whole network of possibility that we don't that's, see before. That's right. Yeah. And, and uh, so channeled information, as Bashar says, you cannot conceive of a possibility that doesn't already exist. Mm -hmm. And that's a really powerful statement. But what he's really saying is the many worlds theory of quantum mechanics is what applies. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that's the basis for it. Okay. So how do you see about people who worries about a future? Because you see, ideas and beliefs are not only create the future, but also align you with a certain past. Mm -hmm. So, so um, the answer then is, is by worrying about the future, you are drawing to you or you're moving yourself into or the probable reality where that worry is real. Mm -hmm. In other words, what you think about, you put energy into. Mm -hmm. And the more energy you put into it, i.e., in this case, worry about an outcome, the more likely you make it that you will live in the reality with that outcome. Mm -hmm. So you would actually make your vibration match that yes. future. Yes, you would. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. So worrying is a bad thing. And the way you stop worrying is you realize that you're the one that chooses the alternatives. Mm -hmm. And and by putting energy into it, you're choosing that alternative. So, mm -hmm. you know, worry comes about when you think that you're um, helpless. You, it comes about when you think that you cannot alter outcomes, mm -hmm. and, which is which is not true. That's a false belief. Right. So, again, beliefs and ideas are what bring about the present that you live in, the past that you lived in, and the future that you're going to live in. And so worrying is uh, a bad set of beliefs mm -hmm. about whatever you're worrying about. Okay. So how about regret about the past? Well, regret about the past. You're talking about the present life or you're talking about any life? Um... Let's just make it simple, um, just the present life. 
All right. So, uh, so the philosophy here is that every experience you have is perfect. Okay. Now that's a radical statement. Uh -huh. Every experience you have is perfect because the experience comes out of your ideas and beliefs about reality, your own personal reality. And the experience, even when it's very negative, uh -huh. is meant to show you that what you're thinking, what you're believing, what you've accepted, probably usually from others, uh -huh. is faulty. Uh -huh. And the pain comes about to show you that you need to change the belief. Uh -huh. And so if you perpetrate something in the past that you regret, uh, you're denying part of your experience uh -huh. and the way to move forward is to accept and it, it, it's accepting the past as you remember it, uh -huh. all of it. Now you accept it. Uh -huh. If you need to make amends for something, if you need to forgive someone else, if you need to forgive yourself, then do that because that allows you to move forward into the reality that's more perfectly aligned with the way you'd want to live. Uh -huh. And it's never good to live in the past and regret is about living in the past. Uh -huh. Okay. I, by definition, you're okay. taking some past event and you're saying, gee, I shouldn't have done that. Uh -huh. So the, the way to move past that is to say, okay, what was I thinking? that caused me to behave in that manner in that particular instance. Mm -hmm. And what do I need to change in my thinking? Okay. That's a present thing. Right. That's not, that's not living in the past. Okay. So it's, it's to pick up the lesson from that yeah, experience. Right. Right. But, but not to punish or judge yourself against it. Yeah. Because you're living in the past and that's bad. That, that perpetuate for, per, perpetuates it. Right. Yep. Okay. That, that makes sense. Yeah. My next question is, in regression, you allow your mind to dissociate so that you can travel to different timelines. But in meditation, you want to keep your mind still and focus in the present moment. So does the two contradict? It doesn't uh -huh. contradict. So Chopra, in his meditations that he does, which are excellent, uh, the one I listened to this morning and participated in talked about you having unbounded awareness. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're still in the now, but being aware of past multiple presents and the future are part of the expansive. Now it is a part of an unbounded awareness and mm -hmm. can all ex access that And the strength and the power of meditation is exactly that. Mm -hmm. However, he wanted you to have unbounded awareness and focused attention. And he said, those two concepts do not contradict mm -hmm. because unbounded awareness makes you aware of the expansive now, but the focused attention in that field says, I'm trying to call up a specific, um, manifestation into this present life or a piece of information or whatever it is. And you do that by the focused attention. The two work hand in hand. So really our function is to expand our consciousness. Mm -hmm. And as we expand our consciousness, it never goes back. It never goes back to the boundary of the old self. And, and so as you as you go out in Chopra's term, have these, this unbounded awareness, you have expanded the domain in which you operate and you never go back completely to the old domain. The limitations that you have before you, you, you encompass that part that has broken, broken free of that. Mm -hmm. And that's one of our functions. That's how, that's how we get the higher levels as a consciousness. So the beauty of so-called past life regression is that 
for most Westerners, it brings a level of awareness to an expanded view that most people don't have access to. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, one last question I have is, in regression, can we actually ask a regression question to time travel to a specific timeline? Or rather, the regression question is more about resolving an issue, so the timeline you go to is decided by the unconscious or your inner self? Well, uh, so I've been thinking about that. Uh, there's a couple of approaches to that. One, I like to think of regression as remote viewing. And in remote viewing, your mind travels to answer that question. And in regression, uh, in regression, you're doing the same thing. You're telling the unconscious, you're saying, I want more information on this issue I'm trying to resolve or this issue, this question that I have. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then the mind travels to that location. Now, here's, here's what's interesting about that. In remote viewing, most of remote viewing, maybe virtually all of it, uh, is done in the blind. Mm -hmm. That is, the ego, the awake part of the mind, does not know the question. Mm -hmm. The unconscious does, however, because it has non-local means of information. And uh, when we ask a regression question, we're kind of doing the same thing. We don't know what will come up. Mm -hmm. And so in a way, in that way, it's blind. You know, sometimes the therapist has some guesses. I know I've, I've had guesses, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, I say a lot of the times the guesses are wrong mm -hmm. or what I anticipate is going to come up is not what really comes up. And so in that sense, it is, it is also blind. You're just saying, go in time and space. And, and give me the information that bears on this problem. And then, the, and then the regression or progression, you know, regression is almost a misnomer, mm -hmm. um, gives you that information. Now, can you say, I want to go back to the time of the period, pyramids? I've, I've, never, I've never helped a client formulate a question in that way. Uh, but... If you can dissociate, which you do when you do a quote regression, mm -hmm. uh, when you go to other lives, I see no reason why that shouldn't work. Now, folks that consider this whole past lives thing, to use the popular vernacular, um, as, as fantasy anyway and not real, real in quotes, um, then they'll say, well, you've just invited the individual to create all kinds of fantasies about the pyramids or whatever time period they go to. And, and if you use remote viewing as the model, if you've really de detached from the ego, then I think, I think I, I see no reason why that shouldn't work. That should be possible. Now, some folks are going to say, so this is the interesting part. Uh, so what if you didn't have a life back in the pyramids? And uh, <laughs> right. so that's a legitimate question except for this. And that is the probable selves, as Seth describes, and the probable selves that you get through the many worlds theory of quantum mechanics uh, says that in some probable reality, you would have had a life in every time period. And so now the question is, even though you're not aligned with a life in the pyramids, it exists. How difficult will it be to get to the probable one rather than the one that you're aligned with? Okay. And, and I don't know the answer to that question. That's probably dependent on the individual, but I think, I think it's doable. Okay, so it could be an experiment. Yes, it, it could works. be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it would work. So this concluded our session today. Thanks for all that you have shared with us, Dr. Stemler. And for everyone out there who are watching, thank you.